Chase Tyler here at the Lakeshore Qualifying Wisconsin, checking in team number 4531, Stempunk, coming in here out of Two Rivers. And of course, I'm uh, gonna be going through this row out here, talking about uh, intake into their magazine and shooter, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on students and graduates. We'd also like to thank Kettering University. Kettering University is where robotic students come for their education. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics, and you can keep going with their BattleBots, VexU, eSports, and FIRST mentorship programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. So Colin, start us out here with your uh, intake. Talk to us a little bit about uh, what went into some of the design for it and of course we'll go into your magazine as well. So when we had designed our robot initially from last year, we hadn't had everything all prepared. We knew what we wanted to do for the magazine with this nice rotation design. And for the intake, we wanted to lead up into that. So this year we had uh, taken inspiration from our uh, FTC expedition uh, through utilizing uh, the green, um, utilizing this green rope that we had uh, used in FTC. And it grabs the balls beautifully as they go in. Uh, we had a couple iterations. We first started with some masonite cuts in, uh, with Illustrator, and then we moved on to acrylic. Uh, and we had uh, placed in our motor on the lower end uh, to raise up just for spacing uh, and security. In the so is pots. this intake here, does this come out or is it fixed like this? It is fixed in multiple positions. And then I notice uh, on these belts here, they're a little bit loose. So uh, do you have any uh, issues with like, the belts falling off or anything like that? We sometimes have issues with the belts going off, but that is, it doesn't happen often. Mostly just because when the ball goes in, there's pressure applied through the bottom. So when the pressure is applied through the bottom, it retains its integrity as it goes up. Um, we've rarely had that problem. It has happened through some testing, but on the field it hasn't uh, broken. Makes sense. Well, take us to this magazine. Let's get nice and close in on this, on the uh, magazine. You guys got these kind of these brushes here. And I'm really interested uh, in these this roller design that you have as well, too. Tell me more about yeah. that. We had uh, designed this roller design as one of the, in the initial perspective ideas of this magazine to um, make sure that the friction is reduced to zero as, as instantaneous points as from the ball going around. The balls have an incredibly high amount of friction if you don't have the wheels. So we uh, use the, um, these brushes in order to um, make sure those balls had spacing between them so they didn't rub against each other uh, and also so they could move around to the shooter. So is this a 2020 or a 2021 robot? This is a 2020 robot. So you've done some uh, modifications to we it. We have done some modifications. Okay. Over the um, so still holding five power cells. For it. Is there anything between those two things you've done to majorly modify from year over year? Uh, other than our intake, yeah. uh, and we used to have paddle designs for the magazine. Sure. But we moved over to brushes because that worked far more consistently. Makes sense. So let's go over to Daniel, who's going to be talking about the uh, shooter a bit more as we go in. So it looks like we got some compliant wheels uh, coming out for that. Interested to hear a little bit more about the functionality of these here. So let's go a little bit more into that. All right, so what we have here is our shooter for this year's robot. Basically, when the balls come out of the magazine, we had to add these rollers in right here so that they wouldn't pivot because what we had was an issue where the balls would just hit the top of our bar and they would start rolling under, get grabbed on by the top wheels and shoot straight up, which is not what we wanted to do. So we put these rollers on to be able to guide them down and more directly into the shooter so that they shoot straight out towards the goal that we're targeting for. These are powered by our two red line motors, which are geared through our gearboxes for as high speed as possible. And we built them very compact to squish that ball so it can shoot out as fast as possible into the um, into the goal. Well, let's actually see before, I don't think we're going to shoot out here because we don't want to shoot anybody here in the field, but let's uh, see the power cell go in so we can see right. our journey a little bit. So, one of the interesting things we talked about just a little bit before, you know, 
sometimes robots have issues, right? Right. And in this case, uh, belt fall off, not quite able to get into that transfer. So how do you typically compensate for that when that happens? Um, well, we find out what the problem is. We'll think of a good solution for it, like our belt slipping off. In this case, our belts are very loose. We noticed that this morning when we started testing, and we yeah. don't have the proper equipment here to be able to fix this. So we, try, we tried a couple other solutions that haven't worked too well, and we can't really combat that too much in this case that we're at. But when we were testing it, when we originally built it, it worked perfectly good. It would shoot perfectly right into the, the magazine yeah. and rotate all the way up to the top. So. And I think that's one of the great things about FIRST is uh, learning from those experiences, right? And how, how do you iterate and how do you get better sort of thing. Let's wrap up uh, on your robot. We're going to be talking about the uh, climber here. It looks like a nice three-stage climber. Yes. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then also just uh, briefly on your drive as well. Okay, so we got a, right here, we have our three-stage linear slide. They are held together with 3D printed brackets that allow them to slide very easily up and down, powered by a red line with a gear as well for a little bit lower torque. These basically just spin with our fishing wire, and as it spins, it will lift up our climber. We'll get up to the top where the bar is, drive forward to get our hook over the bar. It'll just pop right out as that. Pull the rest of the wire out, and then our very, very, very low torque gearbox here will lift the whole entire 119 pound robot up in the air with our ratchet strap here, or with our ratchet right here, that prevents it from counter rotating backwards so that the robot will not drop down to the ground when it's all the way to the top. And last thing here, you guys are using what's called an H-Drive on this. So uh, for those in first, I think are pretty familiar with an H-Drive, but for those who aren't familiar, do you mind just describing it just a little bit yes. for us? Yes, so this is basically your basic design of a tank drive where we have two gearboxes on each side that independently drive one side of the robot. But we also have a third gearbox in the back back here with two other wheels facing sideways. With these Omni wheels, they're allowed to have rollers that can spin. And as those wheels in the center will rotate sideways, it will push the robot side to side as well. So not only will we be able to go front, back, turn left and right, but we'll also be able to strafe sideways, left and right. Well, 4531 Stempunk, once again, thanks for taking the time to speak with us about your robot here. What's Absolutely. your team best selector in the qualifier as you're looking to qualify for the Wisconsin Championship coming up? Uh, but good luck, of course, in future season ball. Thanks for taking the time. All right, thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Don't just sit in class. Kettering University is the only school in the U.S. that allows you to work as an engineer your first year with their three-month on, three-month off co-op programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.